a lot of times we just think our justice system gets it right every time. And if anybody has any questions about anything that has to do with anything in my case, man, I'm right here, ready to talk about that stuff so people can understand. Out here, once you get caught up in the spider web of the Texas law system, it's really hard to get out. And you're basically guilty until proven innocent. That's how it goes. When it's the state of Texas versus you, you might as well get ready for probation or to do some time. Because nine times out of ten, you're not going to beat that. And you're just going to end up another number to the state. Now, once you go through court and all that shit and all that's behind you, if you're on probation or you get locked up, you're going to have paperwork on you. So with SPM, everybody's going off the paperwork and they're saying, oh, look, he was charged with this. He's been locked up because of this. So he did that, even though he has already came out several times on several interviews and spoke his side of the story. Before this, we didn't have his side of the story, but he's already said many different times what he did do and what he didn't do. But he has said, trust me, if I were guilty of this shit, I would have took the five years. I'd have done two and a half years and gone home. But they were trying to tell me that I had to say I was guilty for something I didn't do. He also said, I had to do a piss test every Monday. Mm -hmm. It was some kind of probation because I was going to court. They put me on some kind of weird thing where I had to report every Monday and then do a drug test. So I couldn't, I couldn't smoke no weed in that. I remember I was at Chico Sports Bar on a Sunday night getting fucked up. You know, I was just just getting drunk, you know. These, these were yeah. kind of dark times for me because yeah. I, I got blindsided by these charges. It was heavy on me, you know. You know, I didn't like that. I had to, I had to go report, and I had a damn sure didn't like that I had to quit smoking weed. But anyway, I was getting drunk as hell at Chico's, and uh, I remember I had to go home. And man, I could barely walk. I said, man, I'm, I'm going to wreck my car. Hmm. You know, so I'm in the restroom, and I see some dudes snoring some coke, and, and they dip it with their, with their car keys. And I said, man, dame un llavecito, that means give me a little key. Oh, the nada, you know, you know, claro que si, you know, no problem. So they dip yeah. their car key in the coat, and they hit me up on one nostril, then they dip it again, and they hit me up on the other nostril, so I can wake up and I can drive home. I totally forget that I did that. And the next day, I go do the piss test. So ultimately, that's what led to me losing my bond, and I never saw freedom again. He felt it in his heart that he could beat this case because... He said, like, I never even let it worry me because I never thought I would lose the case. You know what I'm saying? In fact, I had found out about the case when I was at a club. I was at a T-Town 2000 and my brother -Town, walked in the club. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And he walked in and he said, um, hey, bro, you know, this, this chick is saying some fucked up shit. You need to come home. I said, well, what are you talking about? You know, he told me, he said, she's saying her little girl saying that, you know, you do something. I said, man, that bitch is full of shit. That bitch trying to get money, dude. You tell that hoe that if her, if her daughter said something like that, call the police. Don't be calling my family, call the police. But see, this is my best friend's uh, wife. I had an affair with her before that my friend didn't even know about. And she was still, you know, she, she had caught feelings. Because my homeboy used to beat her up. This was back when I was broke, though. This was back in the days. But anyway, now I'm this rapper. I said, bro, I don't know what, what, what that's all about, but just... If she's, if she's saying that her little girl is saying something, tell her she needs to call the police, not my family, because something is going on in that little girl's life, if that's, if that's how she's talking. He said, bro, but she's also talking about Jordan. And she's saying if she calls the police, she's going to tell the police about Jordan. You see, way back when I was 22, years before, I met this, this white girl that kind of... I mean, of course, she lied about her age, and, you know, I'm, I'm just busting in her like it ain't no thing, and she gets pregnant. And uh, it turns out she's an underage girl, and I had a child with an underage girl. Only my best friend knew this, but he must mm. have told his, his wife, this girl. And she's saying if she calls the police, she's going to tell them about Jordan. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I said, you know what, bro? I'll go to jail. I'll go to jail. You tell her, I'll go to jail. Ca call the police. And that's, and that's how it went down. He knew that all this shit was just bullshit. And he really felt like he could beat this because there was no evidence, nothing to prove that her allegations were true. But the state of Texas got him. See, in the beginning of him being locked up, nobody really got to hear his side of the story except his family and close people to him. But I've always been around 
certain people that were around him or around people that were around him they were letting people know hey this was bullshit they were trying to extort him you know and they gave the whole story so i had been knowing this whole story for years but even myself at certain points i kind of felt like man you know you don't know if it's true or not but as time went on and he started to finally talk and speak about it thanks to you know social media and youtube and all that you got to hear it for yourself from him and it does make sense no one wants to ever believe that he could be possibly telling the truth but anytime they have someone close to them that gets wrongfully convicted they want to say the system ain't right but in this situation they don't want to say that the system wasn't right they want to say oh he's locked up because of that he did that shit. then he breaks down how the state of texas was after him because the state of texas wants the world to believe that spm is this person that nobody should like but they try to take me out. They try to take my career out. You know, I was at war with the justice system. I'd had two major standoffs with the police in the free world. And on the second standoff, the SWAT team was all on our roof and shit. We had every news channel. Like, I was going hard with the laws, and I was blowing the fuck up at the same time. I was, I didn't realize by hollering, fuck the police at all my concerts and doing all this stupid shit. I didn't realize how vulnerable I was making myself that anybody could walk into a police station and say anything about me and the police were going to jump on it like why don't rise. He truly feels like they used that situation from the woman extorting him and saying he did shit to an underage girl that was nine years old as a way to get him locked up. In another video with Donnie Houston, he explained that now once this book comes out and people see what happened in court because this book is going to have all the court transcripts it's going to show exactly what happened another thing that a lot of people don't know what happened is when i went back to civil trial when they was you know because first it's criminal then it's civil where they try to get you for your money that trial ended with the with the truth coming out they couldn't even remember the story that trial ended with the jury awarding that family zero dollars so i lost my freedom but my empire was unscathed. But a lot of people don't know that part. So he broke all that down in this new interview. I know it sounds crazy, cause it does, but you could look at Jay Prince. The same thing almost happened to him. They had the feds after him. For some reason out here in Texas, it's like they don't want black and brown to have any kind of power. They'll let you rap, they'll let you act, they'll let you have a business. But if you have too much of a large following behind you and you can have thousands of people do anything at your word, that's something they don't want. To me, I feel like that could possibly be true. See, if y'all weren't out here in Texas when he was in the free world, y'all don't understand the type of power he had. The impact he made from his music, he had everybody with him. He didn't just have the Mexicanos behind him. He had black people, white people, Asian. I mean, every ethnicity out here was behind him. And to this day, you can look at his fan base. It isn't just Mexicanos that play his music. And it isn't just Texas. His following is nationwide, and I would even include other places outside the US, not just Mexico. So when you hear everything from him for yourself, it does make sense. And he also had to clear up some of the rumors that have been put out there that he said wasn't true, just like this one. I never dropped her off at no damn middle school or all this bullshit that they're talking about. That's all bullshit. You would have to be fucking crazy to be sitting there not giving a fuck about getting a, a, an underage girl pregnant that's suicide of course i thought she was of age so he even cleared that up but it just goes to show that people will add a bunch of false shit just to keep him looking like he's a fucked up person and it's also a trip to me that people out there will really say the system is right i'm almost 100 percent sure that everybody out there has had somebody that they know get wrongfully convicted or get blamed for something that they didn't do and get some time for it or get probation you know shit like that i got plenty of people that i know that ended up in the system over some bullshit. and once you get into the system it's like a spider web you don't get out of it but see what y'all don't know is the texas prison system out here they make millions and millions and millions of dollars off the free labor from the people that are locked up so to me it isn't hard to believe that the system isn't always right